much, Nick. Hello, everybody. It's great to speak to you. My name is Peter McLevy. I'm Professor of Law and Associate Dean in the School of Social Sciences. Uh, and I've got a particular responsibility for all the international students who come from around the world to come and undertake one of our great LLM programs. So what I'm going to do this afternoon is to give you some more detailed explanation about what you can expect when you come to Dundee Law School to undertake your, your, your master's degree in law. So for those of you who have not sort of looked into Dundee much before, uh, you can see my first screen. We've got a picture of our beautiful city. Uh, Dundee sits on the River Tay, not far from the, the North Sea, and the university and the law school are right in the heart of the city centre. So a little bit about me first. Um, I've been a professor of law at Dundee uh, for 15 years now, and I've been associate dean since 2017. Uh, and I've got a really, really fantastic additional role in that I'm the university's academic lead for Africa. And that allows me to get to Africa normally very, very frequently. I'm also a barrister. I was called to Gray's Inn in 1999. I'm a door tenant in a leading set of family law chambers in, in London Garden Court. So that's a picture of me uh, judging one of our mooting competitions. Uh, and I'm a specialist in private international law. So I teach several of the courses that are run on the LLM on private international. Uh, my research has traditionally been on the family aspects of the subject. Now, one of the main questions that people always ask me when they're reflecting on which law school to go to to undertake the LLM is, is why should I come to Scotland? Why should I come to Dundee in particular? Many people haven't heard of Dundee. Well, I'm really, really proud to, to, to talk up Scotland and to talk up Dundee. Uh, first of all, I should admit, I am not Scottish myself. Uh, for those of you who've got highly tuned ears, you, you'll note that, that it's actually a Northern Irish accent that, that, that I have, um, but I've spent uh, almost half of my life in Scotland. I did my PhD at the University of Aberdeen and then lectured there after I uh, qualified at the bar in, in London for five years. Uh, so I've been in Scotland for almost 25 years now in, in total. And I think it's a great, great place to live. I find Scottish people are really, really friendly. Uh, I love the uh, history of the, of, the, uh, of the country. So many great places to visit, so many castles. And what I really, really like is the, the wonderful landscapes. And I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. Now, Dundee, Dundee is the fourth biggest city in, in Scotland. We've got a really, really vibrant student-focused university. We're doing super well in the rankings, top 20 now in the, uh, the current Guardian Lee table. Law has always been really highly ranked, top 15 of all the main UK uh, ranking tables for, for, for law schools in the UK. And what I like most about Dundee Law School, and I've taught uh, not just here, but also at Aberdeen, as I mentioned. And before that, when I was uh, qualifying as a barrister, I taught at the London School of Economics. What I really appreciate about Dundee Law School is the fact that we're small and we're so welcoming and student focused. And that is quite different to what you might find at other places. We really do put students at the heart and the forefront of what we do. Another great feature of, of, of our university and law school, uh, we're a campus, but the campus is right in the middle of the city. And it's a very safe city. It's a multicultural city. Uh, and our students who come from all across the world, they have a fantastic time when they join us. We also uh, have a very set of generous scholarship packages that I, I will talk a little bit more about. So as I mentioned, one of the things that, that, uh, that COVID, the pandemic, all the lockdowns have, have brought home to me is, is what a great, great place that, that Dundee is because of so, all these green, green spaces. Uh, it's so easy to get outside and enjoy yourself. So when I'm not wearing my wig and judging, judging moots, I'm doing lots and lots of exercise. I do lots of cycling. Uh, and I've also, uh, this summer, I took up kayaking and all these things you can do uh, from Dundee. It, it's, it really is uh, lots of great countryside right on your doorstep. So here's a picture of, the, uh, of where you'll be coming to. This is the Scrimger building. That's the home of, of Dundee Law School. And I got here the, the list of our different LLM programs. I know many of you will already have got your places and that's fantastic. So just to remind you, we've got our, our new program, Business and Human Rights. We're super excited about that. We've got a new leading academic who specializes in this area, Claire Methvin O'Brien. We also have environmental law. Dundee is a real, real center for environmental law research. Lots of professors who work in this area. Then we have our core commercial programs that are really popular. We've got corporate and commercial law and we've got international commercial law. And you'll see the last asterisk that it is possible if you do international commercial law 
to spend a semester at one of our partner institutions, the University of Sergi Paris, which is 30 minutes in the center of, of, of the, uh, the French capital. And there you can take courses in international commercial law, taught through English by leading experts there. The students doing the dual award LLM will get the, the LLM from Dundee and the master two degree uh, from Sergi Paris. We have another uh, dual award LLM. It's my subject, private international law, and that's run with the University of Toulouse in the south of France. And again, you spend a semester in France learning about private international law from a civil law perspective from leading experts there and the classes are taught through english also for students who just want to construct their own llm we have our general program and that means you can pick any of the modules and i'll be telling you all about those in a few minutes time now one of the key things always to remember um, about dundee uh, is that we have always had a tradition of teaching uh, english law and Scottish law. So obviously we're in Scotland, um, but we have, from our, our creation in 1967, we have taught English law. And even before that, uh, when we were part of the University of St Andrews, one of the oldest universities in, in the world, uh, we, taught, we taught English law. And that, that's probably because of St Andrews' strong connections to England. So that means, the reason I mention this, this means that, that Dundee has got this, this tradition of training lawyers, not just from the common law, but also uh, Scottish lawyers, who, who, who Scotland is a mixed legal system, a mixture of common law and, and civil law. And we have a very, very international focus in our law school. So our, currently our academics come from all across the world. Uh, and uh, so our students who come, also come from all across the world, they can always, always find somebody uh, who's got a, a, a similar background to themselves. We've got a leading international trade lawyer from, from Brazil, an environmental law lawyer from Canada, we've got a corporate lawyer from China, a human rights international lawyer from Denmark, private international lawyer from, from France, another private international law lawyer from, from Germany, a contract lawyer and legal theorist in Italy, uh, an international commercial lawyer from, from, from Jordan, uh, and a public lawyer uh, from Turkey. So a really, really uh, diverse international uh, law faculty uh, and also our student population. And unlike some law schools, we, our student population is really well balanced. We've got students from, from Asia, uh, from China, from Thailand, um, from Vietnam. We've got students from all across Africa. We've got students from North America and South America, all across Europe. And indeed, quite a number of our own graduates, our own LLB graduates, stay on to do a master's degree with us. So if you come to us, uh, you'll be in a really, really multicultural, international uh, class to do your master's degree. The other key feature about coming to Dundee, as I mentioned before, we really are a student-focused law school. Now, our teaching is based on seminars, and we encourage uh, lots and lots of active discussions. This time yesterday, I was doing one of my LLM seminars on private and international law. We had great talks about connecting factors, uh, how somebody is connected to a place for the purposes of jurisdiction or choice of law. And we do our seminars in small groups, so generally around 20 students. And because of our size, uh, our students really appreciate the fact that they have got lots of easy access to our academic members of staff. Now, obviously, conditions are a bit different this year because of the lockdown. But once we open up again in the summer, in the, in the coming weeks, and then uh, over the summer completely, ready for next semester, it'll be possible to have lots and lots of easy face-to-face -face access with academic members of staff. Currently, uh, the, the, the access is done virtually through Teams or, or Zoom meetings. We also have a really, really high level of student support across the university. That might be additional English language support. That might be uh, support in terms of essay writing. Uh, we've got lots of careers advice as well, and that careers advice continues even after you have left the university. And certainly I know that, that myself and my academic colleagues were in regular touch with our alumni and giving them references and giving them advice as to how to take forward their, their careers uh, once they've completed their studies. So key question you're all going to have is about the structure of the program. So I've taken a, a section here from our really, really detailed LLM handbook that tells you all about it. Um, so every student must do the legal research skills module. This is such an important course that tells people, gives people the core skills to, to, to do research, to do legal writing. 
It's integrated within our two-week induction program that, that, that starts each intake. All our students do a dissertation. The dissertation is between 12 and 15,000 words. It is also possible uh, to do uh, an internship in place of the dissertation uh, and students doing one of our internships, they would do an internship report of, of, a, of a shorter length. I'll say a bit more about that in a few minutes time. Now the core part of the, uh, of the LLM are the six substantive modules that you do. Um, your choice of modules really depends on which program you select. If you pick the general LLM, you can pick whichever modules that you wish to do and you construct your own pro program. If you do a named program, then there will be compulsory modules and then you'll be able to choose from, from other modules uh, outside the, the, the compulsory ones. Now, for each of the three modules that you do each semester, uh, we have an introductory class, possibly a lecture for that first one. Then we have five or six substantive seminars and finally, a revision class. That's the structure. So coming in next September, you'd begin with your two-week induction. Uh, then you would uh, do your three top modules. You're completely off over the Christmas vacation. You come back in January, another three modules. We begin to work on the, the selection of the dissertation topic. And then over the summer, you work with a professor on developing your dissertation. So as I said, it's all, all our teaching is based on small group learning. And I've got a current student uh, who joined us today, Bassi, and he'll be able to tell you a bit more about his experiences of this in a few minutes time. But for me to give you the academic academics perspective, um, what we do is we have for each module, we have got a course handbook. Uh, we then distribute uh, questions and reading uh, primary and secondary sources for our students to look at in advance of every seminar. So the students do that reading, hopefully, uh, and they prepare answers for the, uh, to the question set. And then in the seminar itself, uh, I or the, the, the relevant academic will, will lead a discussion on those issues. And doing the LLM at Dundee isn't just about acquiring legal knowledge. Um, anybody can sort of learn rules. What we're interested in is to train you to become analytical, effective lawyers who can appreciate the strengths and weaknesses of different the approaches to law. And we all try to have a very practical approach. So in my courses of, of private international law, it's not just about understanding what are the rules in jurisdiction, what are the rules in choice of law, but being able to, to use those rules. So ultimately, when you go back, uh, to, your, to your future careers uh, and to your employment, you'll be able to give really effective strategic advice to the people that you're advising. So once you have prepared your, 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 your materials before the class, you have the discussion, you will get more insight into the areas that you need to refine your knowledge on. You then refine those notes after the seminar, and then you have a sort of a great set of material for each of the topics that we consider each week. So we have got a list of the, the courses that are running this year. So these are the, the semester one courses. Um, so starting with business transactions, that's a really, really good one to start with. I'm on it. Um, then we have environmental regulation, international investment law, international sale of goods, comparative corporate law, international human rights, law theory and practice, public international law. Uh, and then we have some courses um, that are relevant to, to, to energy issues. We've got the just transition to low carbon economy, We've got legal framework for international project finance. Th these are courses that, that are run in the, uh, the CPMOP, our Center for Energy, Mineral Petroleum Law and Policy. And it is possible to take up uh, a variety of their options as well. So semester two, these are some of the modules running, corporate governance, world trade organization, common law perspectives of private international law, competition law, IP, taxation. Taxation is always super popular. Uh, and then some environmental and energy courses as well, and business and human rights. That's going to be so popular uh, going forward through that new LLM. So in terms of our assessment, uh, we have had to refine our approach to assessments because of COVID, but the normal approach has always been that we do uh, examinations uh, in the autumn semester, and we do written assignments, um, coursework, 
in the spring semester. Uh, what we've had to move to now is to have seen exams that students get a, a set period of time to complete. Um, so they're all completely open book uh, and most students find that that relieves quite a bit of pressure. So we'll probably be sticking with that uh, going forward, even when the, 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 the restrictions required by COVID uh, are lifted. So as I said, lots and lots of support at Dundee Law School. Uh, support, every student has an advisor of studies. Uh, I take a real active role in ensuring there's lots of activities put on for our students, including lots of social activities. We have Discovered Scotland trips organized by the university and organized by the School of Social Sciences. Uh, we have got the English language support, the academic support, academic skills support. And we have the Global Room, which is a great facility, uh, which is open to all our international students. A place to hang out, to, to meet. There's even a little kitchen there where you can cook your food and that's right in the heart of our campus. Now, when deciding where to come and undertake your LLM, one of the key features that, that people, everybody has to think about is employability. How is the LLM really going to help me advance my CV, advance my career? Uh, so Dundee's graduates have had huge success in the legal profession, domestically and internationally. Just flag up sort of some of our success in terms of judicial appointments. Um, more top judges in Scotland than, than any other Scottish law school, lots of leading uh, judges in England as well. The first non-white judge appointed to the Old Bailey is one of our graduates, and the current British judge at the European Court of Human Rights is also a graduate. And we also have judicial appointments all across the, the world. One of my first LM students um, is now in the Court of Appeal in the Gambia. And I've had the pleasure of, of going to meet her in Banjul back in 2019. Now, linked to employability is obviously the, the importance of, of developing professional and transferable skills, and our master's students can get involved in, in our mooting society. We've got a street law uh, set up that will be starting again once COVID restrictions lift. Uh, we have placements for our students. We help our students to try and secure internships, and we encourage our students to develop their legal skills, whether it's, it's, it's their legal skills of research, their legal skills of speaking, when they are undertaking their LLM with us. So in terms of entry requirements, the basic standard is for a second class lower degree, that's what you need. Uh, for students who do the commercial law programs, we do expect you to have a law degree, otherwise it's too big a jump to get to grips with the subjects that we cover. But for the other programs, it is possible uh, to, to, to enter without a, a law degree, but you must show why, give clear reasons why you want to undertake advanced legal study. Your IELTS requirement is 6.5. And of course, we do have pre-sessional courses that can help you get to that standard. And after you arrive, we have got lots of English language support offered uh, by the Academic Skills Centre as well. So internships, let me say a little bit about that because we've got really exciting news. Um, we are going to partner with, with a, a provider to have 15 uh, internships that will be free for all our international students uh, for ne the summer of 2022. So if you join us in October, September 2021, you'll have the possibility to apply for one of those free uh, internships. And that they will take place either face-to-face -face or virtually with, with law firms in China or in Vietnam, Mexico, or indeed in Manchester. Aside from that, we have helped our students uh, secure internships that they have sought to get with leading international organizations. And you can see through this link on our website, some of my students in private international law who've been very, very successful in getting super prestigious internships. So Berenice, she, she did the master's with us and then a PhD, and she secured uh, an internship at the Council of the European Union in Brussels. She was so successful that she's now got a full-time job with the Council of the European Union. So she, she went from doing her thesis uh, on, a, on a topic of, of international and European family law to actually being involved in the revision of the instrument that she was studying. Such a fantastic success story. So Tracy from Nigeria, she is doing her PhD on, on uh, intercountry adoption, and she undertook an in internship at the Hague Conference on Private International Law, the organization that elaborated the, the convention that she is studying, the 1993 Hague Intercountry Adoption Convention. And Caroline, she's from France. Uh, she is doing research into uh, the, 
case law of the European Court of Human Rights on child abduction cases, and she undertook a placement at the European Court in Strasbourg as well. So for our students want to do internships, we give them lots and lots of advice, with lots of help, and we've got a real track record. So we've got internships that students apply for themselves of international organizations, and then we have the internships that we will help organize for you through Pagoda projects. So aside from work and internships, lots and lots of great social activities that can take place at Dundee. And here are some pictures. This, this was from exactly 12 months ago. Every year, uh, I've always organized a student welcome event at our really dynamic uh, riverside. Uh, and this is the, one of the ships that is moored there. It's a museum now, the RRS uh, Discovery. And these are some pictures from that event. So tuition fees, just a reminder of what the fees are for next year. So it's £19,000 for, uh, for the LLM programme if you're coming from overseas. It is possible to pay in seven instalments. And we do have lots of, of great scholarships. We've got scholarships of up to £5,000. Uh, so do reach out to Amy after this call if you want to discuss one of our scholarships. So a key question that everybody always asks is, what's it going to be like to be in Dundee? Uh, given all the challenges that, that, that everybody in the world has been facing through the pandemic. And we have been taking lots and lots of steps uh, to ensure that we have the safest possible experience for all our staff, all of our students. So in the first semester of this academic year, we had blended learning, and that was very successful. So we had small group teaching in big lecture theatres, socially distanced, so that that could happen. And uh, really large classes of so the legal research skills that brought all the students together, they were delivered online. Uh, currently, all teaching is online because that's the government rule, um, but the lockdown restrictions are being lifted, the guidelines have been changed, so we are very confident that we're going to have blended learning with a good degree of face-to-face -face engagement uh, from next semester. This means that large classes uh, online, Small group teaching uh, will be face to face. We also have drop in sessions of academics, and you can have regular meetings with your advisor of studies. So, even, not, even though at the present moment in time we've got the highest level of restrictions, I'm still meeting students. I do sort of a one to one walk and talk sessions because that's the only way that anybody in the UK can meet somebody from a different household. It's by engaging in exercise together. So, I've been organizing these walk and talks around campus, really help my staff. Another question that many students always ask me coming from overseas is, will I fit in in Dundee? Is it a safe place? Uh, and I can honestly, you, we'll hear from Bassi in a few minutes, but I can honestly say that, that I, as, as an incomer, have always found Dundee a pretty safe place, a very welcoming place. And I've never had any sort of uh, bad feedback from our students as well. I think people of Dundee is very, very down to earth. Uh, people are welcoming. And the, the university is, is so important to the city. It's right in the middle, um, so our students are, whenever you go to the center of Dundee, you see lots and lots of, of international faces, and they are all students from the University of Dundee. So one of the last sort of meals that I organize for students, it's always something that I really enjoy doing. Um, I take students like to introduce them to Scottish food, picture of some of our Thai students back in November. And this was the last student event I had the pleasure of going to before uh, COVID hit last year. So any of you joining us from Ghana, you know, you had your international day very, very recently. This is a picture from last year's uh, Ghana National Day celebrations. And that was the party in the evening with some great, great dancing, 7th of March, 2020. So that's it from me. Um, I'm now going to pass on to Nick from our international office, who's going to say a few words. Great, thank you so much, Peter, and uh, thanks to everyone for joining us today. Uh, so my name is Nick Andrews, and I'm a CNE International Officer and Regional Lead for Africa and the Middle East. Uh, so I'm part of the International Office at the University. Uh, so my job and that of my colleagues in our team is to provide support for, for students from across the world. Uh, so that could be on your application. Uh, and Peter has mentioned the uh, entry requirements previously. Uh, but please do check our uh, international study pages for, for more uh, country specific advice. So if you're looking for, for what GPA you need, 
uh, the please do check that or do please reach out to me as well. I'll put my email address uh, in the chat later on. Uh, so we can provide advice on funding and scholarships. Uh, so like Peter said, we have many scholarships uh, available. Uh, so please do check our scholarship uh, search engine. And again, I'll put that in uh, the chat box for you. Uh, so uh, there's plenty of advice and support that uh, we can offer you. Uh, normally I'll be out uh, meeting students uh, across um, Africa and the Middle East. Unfortunately, I can't do that this year, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to visit uh, uh, very soon. Um, so like I said, please do reach out to myself if you have any questions. Uh, I'll be happy to, to help and support you. Are uh, you on mute, Peter? Sorry, thanks so much, Great. Nick. If you now pass on to Amy from our engagement team. Hi everyone, so it's great to see that you were all able to join us today. So the international engagement team, who are we and what do we do? Well, the international engagement team are here to support you throughout your admissions journey. So when you apply and when you receive an offer of study, you will receive an email from the international engagement officer who is responsible for your region. So that means that you will have your own personal point of contact here at the university. Now, there are four of us in the international engagement team. We are a relatively small team and I've attached our photographs to the slide. So in the top left is myself and my name is Amy Walker. I look after all of our offer holders from across Africa. Top right is my colleague, Laurie who looks after a number of different regions, including Southeast Asia, Central Asia, Middle East, UK and EU-based international. Bottom left is my colleague Dandan, and she looks after offer holders from across East Asia. And then we have my colleague Libby Finlay, and she looks after all of those who have applied from South Asia and the Americas. So we want you to feel fully prepared to start your studies with us here at the university. We completely understand that studying overseas can be exciting, but also nerve wracking at the same time. So we will aim to provide as much information as possible about your next steps. You can chat to us however works best for you. And we are available via a range of platforms, including email, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and my colleague Dan Dan is available via WeChat. We can also connect you with course academics. So we work closely with a wide range of teams from across the university, including the admissions teams, but also with academic staff across the 10 academic schools. We also run an international offer holders Facebook group. Now, if you have applied, you will have received the link to join this Facebook group. And you'll see that it's a really close knit community that we have on there of international offer holders. It's a great way to be informed of key updates and events. We will share some stories of alumni and it's a really good opportunity to meet other internationals who will be arriving at the same time as you or starting their studies with us at the same time. So it's a great way to meet others who maybe on the same course as you. So you can meet some friends, you know, before you even start your studies. And my last point, and I want to emphasize this, is that no question is too big or too small. We really are happy to help you and guide you through in this particular journey. So what we will do is when I share the recording of the webinar with all of you who have applied, I will also share the contact information for the international engagement team. So if you're not already aware, you can work out who your personal point of contact is. So now I am happy to introduce you to um, Bassi, who is a current law student here at the university. And he is going to tell you a little bit more about his experience so far. So over to you, Bassi. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. Um, so my name is Basi Hoganitam and I am a current um, student of law, that is LLM Corporate and Commercial Law. Well, from, yeah, from when I came into the UK, my experience has been wonderful, if I must say. 
and and it's particularly due to the people in Dundee. They are very friendly. I mean, I heard that before I came into Dundee, but um, just like you were sitting down here listening to Peter when he emphasized that they were very friendly. Before I came in, the same thing really. They told me how friendly the people in Dundee were. And um, I must confirm that from when I came in, they assisted me. Um, my, my landlord even assisted me in, in carrying my things inside the house, <laughs> which was really funny though, but it was, it was amazing. And um, particularly the issue of lectures. So the lectures are very good. While, while some people find it a little bit hard to adjust to the online lectures, however, um, it, it is very easy to adjust because it provides so many help, particularly um, with regards, it's very organized. And in a situation where you are not able to meet up with the lectures for whatever reason possible, after the lectures, there are always recordings for you to um, refer back to. Or um, for some students that are in different jurisdictions and their English language is not very strong, you could all, you could certainly go back to the recordings and and um, listening to it again to really understand what the lecturer is saying. And also, um, the lecturers are very responsive. So if there is something that they discussed in class and you don't really understand, you can always chat up the lecturer or send the lecturer an email or or or, or through whatever means the lecturer because during the lectures the lecturer is going to state what exactly or rather the means that you're going to use to contact him or her and if you contact the person through that means the person is going to respond to you as quick as possible um also it's with regards to the structure of the lectures so um in the beginning we all start with normal lectures then as you go into the course and we'll start getting group breakouts and the rest. And the group breakouts are very interesting, particularly you get to share your own opinion and get to hear from your colleagues. It's also interesting in on that respect. And that is the, um, you have the opportunity to actually form bonds with friends because after the classes, you're going to have the group discussions with people and that's outside the class and you get to make more friends because like Peter said, you can't really, go out and you you can really um, go out in groups, but you can use that avenue to actually meet people who are in your class and also um, organize one-on-one -on -one meetings with them, maybe take walks to some of the beautiful sites in Dundee. Um, also, with regards to the, on, another thing I found very interesting was the issue of how it has been assessed or rather how, um, the examinations or rather essays are being assessed, particularly this semester. So we are doing essays. Um, I don't know whether that would continue until September, but for now it's very interesting because you get to submit an essay called the formative, then the lecturer responds to you on the formative on how you write, scores you. The, 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 the formative is not indicative of your final grade, but it helps you to understand how to write for the final summative, which is going to contribute to your final grade, which I find very interesting and very nice. Um, most of the textbooks, most of the materials that you're going to need for you to understand each model is always uploaded on the Blackboard Collaborate. So it's like an online platform where all your models and all the items you need to sufficiently understand each model is listed on. So it's very helpful. So you can actually do this no matter where you are in the world. And also is the issue of friends and other activities. So I've been here since January and I've made a lot of friends. Um, some people might ask that, oh, why? But you're not allowed to go out. So like I said, the group breakouts and also you have the opportunity to form groups on WhatsApp and the rest so you can schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings and go and see places in Dundee. Um, also with regards to other fun and activities, what are you, there's so many sites in place, just like Peter said. You can, um, the Tay River, I find it very relaxing walking along the river. Um, there's also other site, like if you look at the picture, there's this beautiful building that is very strange, but it's, but it's quite nice. I went there, it's, it's, it's a very good place to take pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, and there's so many other fun things to do. So um, you can, meet up with a friend and probably discuss. You can play online games. There are so many other activities. I'm currently involved in um, um, an essay competition um, on environmental law. You could also um, do 
other activities like I'm also involved also in an enterprise challenge. You can also have online parties, which some people might not see it as making any sense, but it's quite interesting. Um, and also, um, okay, yeah. So it's, it, it's, it's actually a wonderful experience. So before I came, I actually had some doubts, actually have, had some doubts with regards to um, whether I'm going to enjoy my stay because of the COVID-19 restrictions and the rest, but it's been absolutely amazing. And I look forward to seeing some of you soon, or if possible, all of you. Thank you very much. Rasi, thanks so, so much. It's, it's great to hear from you. And uh, Amy, also, thank you so much. I can just reiterate what Amy said. The engagement team, they are such a friendly uh, group of colleagues, and, and they are such a wonderful resource to help you with your application. Um, so we've now got time to have some questions. So if you do have a question, please sort of put it into the chat. Uh, we've all been sort of answering some of the questions that, that, that have come in. Um, and we put answers to those. Let, let me start by asking uh, Bassi a bit more about his experiences. Um, so Bassi, in terms of wh which modules have you chosen this semester? So I chose international competition law. I chose international tax law because of my tax background. I chose um, corporate governance, which is compulsory for my model, for my um, program and also um, legal research skills and dissertation, yeah. yeah. So cur currently you're su you, you, you've submitted your proposal for your dissertation and you're gonna get feedback on that. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So obviously a question that many students ask is, is, is about the nature of study at, at, at Dundee, the way in which classes or seminars are organized. So maybe think about taxation. That's one of our super uh, popular courses and we've got a great sort of former uh, tax lawyer who's now an academic who, who, who runs that. Uh, Yvonne, um, to tell people a bit about the, the way in which you, 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 you prepare for your tax classes and the way in which the tax classes are organized. Okay, so, so on the platform, because each and everybody has access to a particular platform that contains all your models and um, all the lectures you would do for two to three classes ahead. So most of them, for, most, for some courses, they have all the, all the subjects or rather all the titles you're going to work on for the entire models. And also how you're going to, the materials or the test books you're going to need. Some of them are online, some, some of them are in the library. So um, you read ahead because you have access to literally everything. You read ahead and come to the class. Then you discuss. It's, it, it takes a form of more like a seminar rather than a lecture. So essentially, you have to have some form of background knowledge. So you're coming to the class to literally discuss on the topic. And I find that absolutely wonderful because it's, 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 you see circumstances or situations where your colleagues are challenging conclusions that you have made in the past and you're left to sit down and think about, okay, so it can actually, so you can actually think about this this other way. Also, there are breakout groups and the rest which you can use to discuss about your opinions with your colleagues. So it's, it's, it's very nice. It's very nice. That, that's great. Um, and it, do, do you find it easy to ask questions to, to, to your lectures for your three modules? Oh, definitely. So a huge portion of the lecture is questions. No matter the kind of questions you have, just ask it. And, and, and the, because when I started, my problem was, oh, it's my, does my question really make any sense? But no question doesn't make any sense because they'll try, and, and in some cases, you might not be able to articulate what you want to ask, but because of the experience, they'll be able to drive you home to the point you want to make and help you answer your question. So definitely there's more than enough opportunity to, answer, to ask and your questions will be answered. That's great. For, for me, the, the, this is always one of the challenges uh, of, of, of being a really effective um, professor and, and, and lecturer because I know that the size of the investment that our, our students make in, in coming to us and we want them really to progress uh, but also Dundee is a very friendly place and, and the, the members of staff are all pretty friendly so we try and have classes that are friendly that are engaging where everybody's approachable but at the same time we are really trying to challenge our students and, and sort of push them on so that they can achieve their full potential and, and to get the uh, make the most of, of the huge investment that they've put in. Um, but it is possible to, to, to do that in a fun, engaging, welcoming way. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoy doing with my, my private international law students. 
So, Basti, one final question before we open the floor. Um, what would be your, your, your two top tips for anybody considering to undertake an LLM degree? Well, I can I, well, um, so, so can I give three, if you don't mind? Three, please. <laughs> Splendid, splendid. Okay, so first and foremost, there's this misconception that you really have to know exactly what you want to do in the future before you can take an LLM degree. That is not right. Sometimes you might have a particular interest and come to do the LLM and during your modules, you find an interest that you actually like. Secondly is, um, another advice would be just try as much as possible to read ahead. So, so that would absolutely, because I won't lie, the coursework is quite bulky, which is character, which is the same for probably any other master's or higher educational endeavor. But um, if you try as much as possible to read ahead and you come to the class, everything will come organically. And finally is time management. It's very, very, very important. So before I came, I have a very funny, so Netflix, essentially <laughs> try as much as possible to um, cut down on a few things I like watching anime but I had to try to discipline myself to actually um, because you have to read you have to understand it you have to come to class and discuss after the class you have to read what was taught I mean to get a deeper understanding on it and and then um, one of that place where time management comes in is the issue of the essays. So you have to prepare ahead because if you don't start researching ahead, when it is time to submit the essay, anything you submit might look very shallow. And the academics like Prof. Mr. Well, like, like Professor Peter would, would know that and you won't really get a very good grade. So yes, yeah, so time management, try as much as possible to read ahead. And you don't really need to know exactly what you want to do. Great, thanks, Bassi. Yeah, that, 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 that's great, great advice and advice I try, try to give to, to all students I, I, I speak to as well, whether undergraduate or postgraduate, but that, that getting into a good routine because you, you, you'll have lots of time to enjoy yourself, um, but it's really important to sort of strike the appropriate balance so that you really get on top of, of, of the seminars each week. Uh, and then you also have the time to, to uh, some people get part-time jobs, uh, some people um, go and explore the countryside, do lots and lots of exercise. So thanks very much, Passy. So I see that there, there are questions coming in. So I've got a question here about, um, it's from, sorry, my scrolling function is not working. I can read the, the question out for you, Peter. Okay, um, yeah, so Uchenna's question. Yes, yes. So she's asked, I have a question on picking a specialisation. I was giving an admission to LLM General Law, how to pick an area of interest for specialisation purpose. Okay, right. Well, this was always something that was super easy to answer in the past because we, 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 we try to be really, really flexible to our students. So if you come in on one LLM and want to change to a different one, uh, that's not a problem, provided you do the compulsory subjects and you have your dissertation on a topic linked to that program. Unfortunately, things have become a little bit more complicated, more complicated because of visa reasons. So I know many students coming to study in the UK, they'll want to take advantage of the post-study work visa. Uh, if you're to do that, uh, you must graduate with the, 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 the master's program that you were originally admitted for. Four. So you do have to think really, really carefully to make sure that, that the, the LLM that you do is the one that you initially got, got accepted for. Is that, that's correct, Amy, isn't it? You, you'll keep me right on all these visa issues. That is correct. So the course that is listed on your CAS letter would need to be the course that you graduate in. So you will need to think really carefully beforehand. Um, yeah. But we, we will be happy to answer questions about that, won't we, Peter, just to help people prepare for the correct course. Yeah, but if you do want, if you've been admitted um, on the general and want to change now to corporate and commercial or environmental, your CAS hasn't yet been issued, that's not a problem. We, we, we can change over. The, the only area where, where uh, we need to think a little bit more carefully about which LLM somebody does is if somebody does not have an LLB, a law degree for their first degree, uh, then it, it is a little bit more difficult to try and undertake one of our commercial law programs just because they're so technical and they really do require previous legal knowledge. 
hope that sort of answers your question. So Amy, the next question that we've got. I've got a question here on cost of living. Uh, someone's asking, is uh, Dundee an expensive place uh, to, to live? Uh, so I guess I'll put it to, to Bassi first of all. How have you found the, the cost of living in Dundee? Well, the cost of living in Dundee would largely depend on, um, your, on how you live, really. But on a baseline, it's very cheap. So, so most often than not, I advise international students. So I'm from Nigeria. So when I was coming, I took a boatload of food and came. So um, I can confidently tell you that for feeding, I don't spend more than 10 pounds in a week because the food I brought is still enough or, or rather I still remain in. Then for rent, so um, it's quite cheap. So it still boils down to what you like or what you're comfortable with. So the accommodations that are cheap, the accommodations that are, are not, not cheap, affordable, and the accommodations that are, are very, very comfortable. So it simply depends on what you want. So you just have to cut your coat according to your size. Yeah, and, and another thing is everywhere is a walkable distance. So you don't really have to spend anything on transportation, so long as you're working within Dundee. Yeah, d definitely. When you when you do look at the sort of the the, the, the comparisons that are produced by, by different organisations, the, the cost of living in Dundee is is much lower than, than many many other cities. And certainly, uh, whether whether you're a student or you're working, it's something that we all sort of really appreciate about our city. We got the next question. Um, yes, we've had a question come in about um, law societies, and are there any opportunities to join law societies at Dundee? Yep, so we've, we've got lots of student societies, we've got the, 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 the Law Society, we've got the Mooting Society, we've got Dundee International Law Society. Uh, we, we also have sort of societies that students can join outside of law. We've got the uh, DARN, the Dundee Africa Research Network. There's a multidisciplinary research network that brings together law students and non-law students who, who are interested in African-focused research. So we've got lots and lots of societies. Bassi, have, have you joined any? Um, not yet, but but I think I'll look into it after, after the call. Yeah, but I've joined so many others. So <laughs> yeah. So w w which other societies have you joined? So so not really a society, but it's like um, a program. So it's called the Enterprise Challenge. So essentially, what they do is that you you form a team, pitch your idea to them, and they'll give you like a very like a seed funding to be able to start your own business. Yeah, and I'm also a member of. Um, I'm also a student rep uh, for the LLM course. So um, I think by virtue of that, I'm probably a member of, of DOSA, the, yeah. yeah and it's also I'm the International Engagement Ambassador. That's why I'm here today. Yeah. yeah. Great, thanks. Good, next question. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Uh, so I've had a question uh, probably put to, to Peter. Uh, do you keep in contact with your uh, law graduates? And I guess you can expand on that in terms of our alumni and uh, what they go on to, to do after leaving Dundee. Yeah, thanks very much, Nick. Yes, well, one of the things that, that I really enjoy most in, in my two sort of uh, managerial roles as, as Associate Dean International and Academic Lead for, for Africa is the engagement that I, I'm able to have with, with, with our alumni. Um, I do lots of work with our alumni across Africa, particularly with our huge alumni chapter in, in, in Nigeria. Uh, and pre-COVID, I was going off to, to Nigeria three times a year, uh, and uh, it, it's been wonderful to see the success that they have had after following their, their completing their degree at the University of Dundee. Um, also, on, on a sort of informal level, I'm sort of in personal touch with, with, with lots of, of, of graduates. Um, often, they're, they're reaching out to get references, to get advice on, on applying for jobs. Uh, sometimes, they go on to undertake uh, PhDs and want advice, feedback, on their proposals. And so that's something that I and all the colleagues at, at the University of Dundee do all the time. And it's, it's, I think it's testament to the very close relationships that we have with our students, because as I said in my presentation, as Bassi has, has reinforced, it is a pretty friendly down to earth place. Um, I know not many people will, well, many people will not have heard of Dundee before compared to sort of mega, mega cities. Uh, we are a small place, but one of the great features is because of our size, being a small city and a small university and a relatively small law school, is that we're able to have lots and lots of close contacts uh, and that enables good relationships uh, to develop uh, and supportive relationships 
Uh, and as I said, we're all very student focused and that doesn't just extend to, to being interested in our students whilst they're with us on campus, but also afterwards. And we're sort of, lots of our students do come back uh, and speak. We, we had a, a wonderful Q&A session uh, on Tuesday night with one of our sort of high profile uh, graduates who, who's become a, a partner at a leading uh, Anglo-American law firm in the city of London, uh, Shearman Sterling. Uh, and he did a Q&A for our law students and gave lots of advice about what life is like as a leading commercial practitioner and also uh, the, the application procedures for students who want to become a solicitor at that firm. So we've got super strong connections with our alumni. Um, Peter, we've had a question come through. Um, what is your advice for internationally trained lawyers who intend to study an LLM and then proceed to qualify to practice in Scotland? Yeah, so anybody who wants to go and practice in, in, in England or in Scotland, um, the, 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 the better option for them would be to take the, the two-year graduate entry LLB. Um, so we've got the graduate entry LLB in English law or in Scots law. So depending on where you wish to practice, that would be the programme to take. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, someone's asked uh, about working while studying. Uh, so maybe Peter, if you'd like to, to, to answer that question. So can students work uh, part-time whilst doing the, the master's degree? Yeah, so quite a number of our students do work under the visa. Amy, you'll, you'll keep me right. I think 20 hours is the maximum number that a student can work under, under a student visa. Um, obviously, as an academic uh, and, and, and as an advisor of studies, I, I always tell my students to, to, to think carefully as to how much work they can, they can do to ensure that they're able to... to to succeed and to achieve their potential on their LLM. So certainly I don't think people should be, I usually say sort of about 10 hours a week is, is, is a good compromise. Um, obviously the, the, with COVID, the number of jobs in, in Dundee and every sort of city around the world has diminished slightly. Um, but in normal times, our students have got employment in, in shops and in restaurants in call centers, uh, doing security work. There are many, many different options that students have, have succeeded and get employment in. Great, thank you, Peter. Um, so, Bassi, this question might be best directed to yourself. So, Yuchena has asked about accommodation in Dundee um, and if there are opportunities to live, you know, out with the campus. And I know that you stay in private accommodation yourself. So, can you share your experiences of that? So, yes, you could stay outside the campus and there is a lot of options. So, so it's either you take um, a shared apartment or if you have a little more money to spend, you, you could take a one bedroom flat or if you have families, because um, I know some of my colleagues came here with their families, you could probably take uh, uh, an accommodation with more rooms. So yes, there, there's a host of accommodation. If there's one thing that is readily available is accommodation, but it's always good to at least sort it out before you actually come into the Dundee, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, so I think we're coming to coming up to the end of the the, the webinar. Uh, so I just want to say thank you so much for our panelists and for everyone for, for joining and attending today. Um, Peter, can I pass over to you to to provide some closing comments? Yeah, thanks very much. And, and, and thanks particularly to, to, to Bassi for, for joining us today. And I think these events are always so much better when we can hear from one of our current students. Uh, to give her or his own experiences. Um, so to everybody here who's joined us, thank you very, very much. Um, I hope you'll have got a good flavor from what you could expect if you come to undertake your master's or your graduate entry LLB at the University of Dundee. Uh, we are a top ranked uh, law school, but we're also a, a very student focused law school. So it's somewhere where you'll get lots of support. We will do our best to ensure that you are able to achieve your full potential uh, in your future legal career. So if you do have any questions uh, about the application process, please do reach out to Amy. Uh, she really is not lying. She is such a super friendly uh, person and will give you lots and lots of support. If you have any more questions uh, about the content of the LLM or interest in scholarships, do, do then please reach out to me uh, as well. And I'm happy to, to have a one-on-one -one discussion. So thanks very much, Nick. Thanks, everybody. It's been a great session and uh, I hope you, you have the best of success in your application. Uh, processes and hopefully I'll see lots of you in sunny Dundee next October. Thanks very much.
Great. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye.